What an awesome trailer. Were you guys ex- as excited as we were? Mace, the bonkening is upon us. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things uh, real quick. I'm joined by Stefan, Andre, and Anastasia. And we're going to get into the hero narrative and art. How are you guys doing today? Great. Excited to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Yep. Great. Thank you. Well, thank, you for, <laughs> thank you for joining me. It's awesome. A <laughs> couple of things real quick before we dive into this, because I forgot them in the last segment, is uh, we have uh, seen the reports of uh, some connection issues, disconnects, things like that. Uh, the team's been investigating. We have a couple of leads on some potential causes. So we'll keep you guys uh, updated on that uh, as that investigation progresses. And then what's the other thing? Armor variations will be in each segment transition for all of the, all of the heroes. So if you want to see your uh, your mains armor variations, keep an eye out on those uh, segment transitions so you can see those. So Stefan, let's talk about Afira. Let's absolutely talk about Afira. I'm I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's, I'm ready. Are you ready? We forget everything. No. If we keep saying it, will it be true? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Afira, new hero. Uh, she's an Outlander, and she's our first uh, Arabian hero. So. Uh, one of the beautiful things about the Outlanders is it allows us to bring warriors from all over the globe to Ferrana for the first time. Uh, and she's our first uh, Arabian hero here. All right. So what can we expect from her? So that's like the high level. But like, what can we expect gameplay-wise? from the uh, Sure. Um, um, the other great thing about Outlanders, of course, new culture, but also their kind of identity is to bring unique gameplay opportunities to us. Or it's something we've done with every single Outlander because we had uh, what, uh, exactly pirate beats and chains. Beats and chains. Exactly, yeah. Medjay had uh, two modes uh, with a with a breaking apart weapon, uh, and this one brings actually two kind of cool gameplay opportunities. So first off, uh, something called Relentless Reach, which uh, awesome brand name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, allows her. Yeah, she's got a short range weapon, of course. But she can get through a group fight to other sides of it and kind of really run down her opponent. Nobody is really safe from her, even though she's a short-range character. She can run really good, and she's going to get you. I had a little bit of time with her uh, the other day, and I was like, oh, you can you can do that? You, uh, like big Yetus deletus energy. Yeah, oh, you're rolling? Wrong answer, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you think you're safe because you're on this side? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> you want to try and run? You want to try? <laughs> Super cool. So yeah, short range for, for regular attacks, but relentless reach to get through that group fight. And then you'll see some feats and so on later on with uh, JC, Vanessa, and Nolan to uh, uh, really show you how yeah. she increases over, over time, which is cool. Uh, it's good. And then the second unique gameplay opportunity that she brings is stance choice becomes very critical for her. Um, anywhere you are inside a chain, if you do an attack, the direction influences what property do you get at that time. So, you know, you have to really be like, uh, do I want this at that time? Do a top. If you want this, do a left. Uh, yeah, call. for my very smooth warden main brain, uh, <laughs> I was very quickly like, oh, this is this is a hero with a high skill ceiling. Yeah, we're very much hoping to see a lot of creativity, a lot of mastery, and some really awesome plays out of, out of players with this character. So can't wait till you get your hands on it. Uh, it's going to be cool. I'm I'm so excited and a mace hero finally in for honor like Ex- a proper mace exactly let's do the whole rundown I guess of of what are the properties right so she's got the mace and shield these are weapons uh, she's got two armor sets coming that the mace and shield uh, the mace and the shield one in one hand one in the other hand yeah, yeah so exactly is there are, can, can I punch someone with the shield <laughs> yes you could absolutely <laughs> you have to wait till the next segment but we'll show you uh, and it'll be awesome. Uh, Anastasia, spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do all the cool stuff right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a few minutes. Next segment. Uh, Anastasia, in, in just a couple minutes, is going to show you the two armor sets and their variations. These are awesome as well. Um, she's an Outlander. She's a hybrid. Uh, she's gender lock. So, just as we did in the last uh, two years, Warmonger Griffin, Kyoshin Pirate, uh, Medjay Afira, we're following the same pattern, basically. We're we're nothing if not consistent. We're yes, hopefully. <laughs> I, I I know some people in chat will be dismayed, but you know that's how we do it. I mean, she's gonna look cool. You'll see the armor yep. sets, and, and you'll like it, and then you play it, and you'll be like, it's awesome. <laughs> well, um, if if that's everything for right now, I would love to jump into uh, Fira's background. What is what is her story? Where is she coming from? Andre, talk to me. Absolutely. Well, uh, the first thing to know about the Fira is that they are warrior scholars. 
Um, so in battle, they are highly acrobatic, they are tactical, and they fight with a lethal elegance, as Stefan mentioned. Um, this is even reflected in the name, Afira, which means uh, gazelle in Arabic. And the gazelle, the way that it moves, was a major influence uh, for us across the board. Um, it was even the code name for a while. And so many of us still kind of know Afira as gazelle. Um, <clears throat> The Afira, though, they're not just killers, right? They're not just going to bonk you and, and walk away. Um, bonk. Bonk. Uh, <laughs> besides this elite training, they're also given a rigorous education in sciences and the arts. Uh, they really uphold knowledge as sacred above all. Uh, but in the end, all this training, all this education, it really only has one purpose, and that is to guard the Sultana. Which, according to the lore story, they maybe didn't do the best job of. I'm going to I'm gonna well actually you. <laughs> well, oh, okay. actually... Uh, if you listen to the uh, the story that we just uh, heard right before, there is one hero who does step up and tell the Sultana and warn her about the uh, the Revere threat. But the Sultana, in her pride, uh, didn't listen. You have to keep in mind that uh, Arabia had been relatively secure now for centuries. Um, and I can tell you a little bit mo more about that hero uh, if uh, you want to hear. It, is it is it Heba? It is. I think Heba. it's Heba. It is Heba. Um, so yes, Heba is our main Afira hero. And like the other Afira, she is recruited off the streets. She's a poor outcast. That's how the Sultana gets all her soldiers. Um, but Heba, she's really an exceptional fighter. Uh, she rises through the ranks meteorically, um, and she shows a real proficiency for astronomy. And so naturally, uh, being an incredible fighter, being great at astronomy, that positions her well to be the, uh, the guardian of the celestial sphere, right? Um, so... Uh, she essentially just uh, wants to uh, stop Revere now at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's uh, kind of the vibe that I've that I've gotten with their conflict. Is Revere's got one idea, Heba has another. That's right. And as you also heard in the short story, uh, she wants to rebuild the sphere because uh, she wants to follow Revere and stop her and. Uh, I can tell you that she is mostly successful at rebuilding it, not completely. Uh, so it was already like... Bubble gum, duct tape, aluminum foil. Exactly. Like, yeah. It was a bit like reading uh, tea leaves before, and so now, uh, to use another metaphor, mixing metaphors here, it's like a static television set. Or like when YouTube goes down to 240p, if you're Gen Z. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, and so what I can tell you at the beginning of the season, uh, while she is successful at that... Um, there's also uh, perhaps a little clue that we've hit. Oh, there, yeah. We hit the, there's a clue for people in chat. That's right. Yes. Is it here? Is the clue in the room with us right now? It might be. It might be. Uh, we've hidden it somewhere, so you have to uh, take a look for that. Okay. Can Can you show me in the broadcast where the clue is? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but if you find it, you'll get a glimpse into uh, the future of Heathmore as well. Well, speaking of inspirations clues, all kinds of good Afira stuff. Anastasia, what were some of the like artistic direction inspirations that went into Afira? And I think we have some concept art to kick this off. Yep. Yes, we definitely have some concept art to show. So um, when we started creating the character, it's always super interesting, super fun, and very hard thing to do. Because you have to think about so many things. Uh, so first of all, her personality, right? So we know that she is precise, elegant, and uh, tactical. So we ask ourselves how she might look like. Uh, what's going to be her silhouette? Um, and we thought that she is elegant. So she has this uh, thin uh, silhouette. And uh, she is f from the... Arabic, we have this Arabic theme, right? So even from far, you notice that she has this Arabic vibe in her silhouette. And she's, when she's coming closer, she's getting more and more dangerous, of <laughs> course. Yeah. No, and I, yeah. I, I love how this, the silhouette, whether near or far, even with her slender frame, like you know exactly what's coming your direction. And, um, yeah. But just th she's super fast. Yeah. So probably you, we want to even <laughs> notice here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I know that usually, or I, I can say usually, right? We will, uh, when we're designing a hero, you, you guys will start with a weapon. 
and then kind of be like, okay, what hero kind of comes out of this weapon? And I know with Afira, it was a little bit the other way around. We knew we had this hero concept and, and that kind of freed us up to be like, okay, now what weapon fits best with this hero? Yeah. Yes, exactly. This is what happened with this character. So uh, we tried like different types of weapon, but nothing like really f- feels like it's her r- weapon. And then we found this uh, very interesting, um, unique technique, uh, like fighting technique with um, the mace and the shield. And it actually looks like a dance. You wouldn't suggest that, you know, mace is not very elegant probably this is your first thoughts yeah that's kind of what a lot of like fantasy media kind of portrays the mace as this big heavy unwieldy thing and like as a historical martial artist uh, I've been firsthand receiving on the end of the reality that you know it is very fast Uh, you know we're talking two and a half to four pounds like because you've got to swing it all day in a (laughs) battle it can't be this big heavy thing uh, but they're real quick, and they're not fun to get bonked by. Not uh, at all. Not at not all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love seeing that paired with a shield, because I think a lot of times we think of, like, this big, you know, gargantuan Sauron mace, and to see something so lithe and elegant yeah. is, is really awesome. Yeah, and fits her super well. Um, and also, uh, as you can see, this beautiful weapon... Um, some of them even have a story. Wait, on, are, is there weapon lore? There is weapon lore, yeah. I, so I can, I can hear like Pyro and Era and the rest <laughs> of the lore community just being like, huh? I'm listening. <laughs> so just like in season 22, uh, we are introducing uh, backstories for the weapons. And so those will be available February 2nd on the website. Um, and uh, what I can tell you right now is uh, probably my favorite is the Lost Century set. Uh, tells the story of three Afira who are trapped behind enemy lines and they have to fight their way back home. So if you want to learn more about Arabia, you want to learn more about these amazing weapons, uh, keep an eye out for when the TU drops on uh, February 2nd. That is awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I, I just love what the art team has done with these weapons, the colors, the inlays, uh, and the armors as well, and the, a lot of the uh, historical inspiration yeah. that went into those. Like we're seeing right here with the patterning, the inlays, uh, the, all the different textiles. Exactly. And also, uh, when we started to work on her, uh, she is very light and uh, tactical, so she cannot wear like very heavy uh, armor, right? Uh, so that's why we gave her this light armor. But her body is fully protected. Uh, she has this very nice chain mail and that uh, enforced with uh, metal uh, plates. So... She is deadly, and uh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and I think later we can look forward to Vanessa telling us a bit about that crescent. Oh yeah, uh, being uh, <coughs> functional. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the inspiration here. I think Andre, you and I were talking the other day just about like the Abbasid period, and right. and kind of a little bit outside of that, the like eighth to thirteenth century window, um, and just all of the inspiration uh, from not only that time span, but the whole region of the world. And we just basically went, okay, we're just going to take all this Join. time and space and yeah. into one hero. Yeah. There are uh, a few uh, historical inspirations. And so, yes, that's one of them. Uh, the early Abbasid period of uh, the 8th to 10th century, a uh, really fascinating time. You had a Muslim empire uh, ruled over a vast territory from modern Morocco to Pakistan. Um, and people from all over this empire, they would meet, they would influence each other, uh, mostly in Baghdad, the capital city. And so you have uh, influences ranging from Arabian to Persian, and uh, we really see this all represented in uh, season 24 as well uh, with Euphira. But um, it's never a one-to-one history, of course, in Piranha. Right. We're an alternate timeline. Yeah, we just, we just take, we take what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, but uh, the Abbasid, uh, Abbasid period is definitely a major inspiration. Yeah, and just like, you know, it wasn't always like a cozy, like, I think a lot no. of times we think of it as a melting pot area, and it yes. was more like a convenient crossroads of sharing of knowledge and culture, sometimes opportunistically, sometimes maybe less so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, more necessity 
driven yes. uh, and there you know there were conflicts in that era as well but I love seeing that inspiration pulled into Heath more and how you guys have said okay we're gonna you know take this and pull from that and you know how that weaves into you know a, a you know expanding the for honor mythos yeah so and I think like uh, we had like inspiration from like the Mamluks that's right so that would be the second uh, major inspiration uh, the Mamluk Sultanate. And the Mamluks, they were very fascinating uh, soldiers, ethnically diverse soldiers who served in the armies of sultans. And some of them were even uh, personal bodyguards to sultans and trusted to uh, stay in their bedchambers overnight and not murder them in their sleep. Um, because when I become a king, that's what I want, is some guy watching me sleep. Yes. That's, that sounds Some that's guy may do that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that really, yeah. that's going to make me feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> And so the Mamluks were mostly successful at that. Uh, eventually, they branch off, they form their own sultanate, and they're very successful there, two and a half uh, centuries approximately. Um, but uh, yes, unfortunately, that splinters off. But uh, in our timeline, the Ufira, they're the natural offshoot uh, of the Mamluks. They do have a much more positive relationship uh, with the Sultana than less, the Mamluks did with their sultan. Less of the compulsory components. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, that was another uh, major inspiration. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much, each of you, for joining me on this segment.